guys know how much I love unique and interesting servers in my home lab. Starting way back with my first dual node super micro server, then on to the quad node server and a proxinator. So what special server do I have in store for you this time? Well, you're just gonna have to stick around and find out. This video is brought to you by Home Lab Gear. My home lab was a mess, so I designed and created a variety of different products to help me manage and protect all of my sensitive gear, and they're available to you too. Tackle the storage of your countless 3.5 inch mechanical drives, organize all of your random 2.5 inch consumer and expensive enterprise SSDs, protect all of your delicate NVMe SSDs, store all of your DDR DIMMs and those easy to misplace SODIMs, and collect and protect all of your expensive SFP transceivers. You can get all of these and more right now too, just head over to homelabgear.shop or check for a link in the description and get your home lab organized. Hey there home lovers, self hosters, IT pros and engineers. Rich here, it's 2025, which by the way, happy new year. It always seems like I end up building a new server in the beginning of the year, and this year is no exception. This time, however, we're gonna be upgrading my storage server, lovingly known as Super Saiyan, with this guy here. This is a dual socket, first generation Intel scalable Xeon Gold 6130 that shipped with 192 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC memory. But Rich, this doesn't look special at all. And from the front, you are right. What makes this server unique is this here. Dun, 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 Seriously, 12 hidden in the middle and 12 up front. 24 drives in it to you. Look at that. This bad boy's secret trick is that it's hiding another 12 bays inside of itself. That's right, this 2U beast holds 24 3.5 inch discs, plus another 2.5 inch SSDs in the back for redundant OS storage. Now that the secret is laid bare, let's get on to the full specs. First off, the eBay listing, cause there are still more of these systems available if you're interested. Let's get the price out of the way here first, since that's always a hot topic in many people's minds. I bought this Supermicro SSG 6029P-E1CR24L server for basically $1,100 shipped to my door. That's $1,000 for the chassis and another $95 in shipping. And while that may feel like a big chunk of change, when you consider the fact that the server comes with two Xeon Gold 6130 CPUs and 192GB of DDR ECC memory, all one needs to do is add a few disks and boom, you've got a fully functioning server. There's a link in the description if you want to check out this listing for yourself. What drew me to the server were a few key things. One, it has 24 3.5 inch drive bays in a single U. Uh, yes please. Two, it's a V1 and V2 Intel scalable platform that ships with both of the CPUs and RAM. And three, it comes with 25 gig connectivity already installed. I've been playing on replacing my older storage server Super SAN for some time now, and that system is running Intel Xeon E5 2680 V4 CPUs which if I do my math right, are nearing nine years old. I want something that has some more modern CPUs with some upgradability left in them, hence the V1 to V2 scalables, and would provide me with more storage capacity potential beyond the existing 12 bay chassis I have now. Let's get the outside dimensions squared away first. This server is meant to be installed into a 19 inch server cabinet and measures in at 437 millimeters wide by 89 millimeters high by 863 millimeters deep. This server is deeper than a typical 2U server because of its mid-chassis 12 bays of storage. So if you're considering this server, make sure your cabinet can support it first. Up front we have 12 visible 3.5 inch bays, and again, hidden inside an additional 12 3.5 inch bays, bringing the grand total to 24 for this host. All of the 24 bays are SAS3 and SATA3 compatible. Around the back, starting at the top left, we have two 2.5 inch SATA3 hot swap drive bays, and below them, a Supermicro Siam network interface, featuring two 10 gig base T copper ethernet ports and two 25 gig SFP28 cages based on the Intel X550 chipset. Power delivery is provided by dual redundant titanium PSUs capable of 1600 watt at 240 volt or 1000 watt at 120 volt. Below the PSUs, we have a dedicated nine pin serial port, a 15 pin VGA port, and to the right of them, a single one gig IPMI ethernet connection and dual USB 2.0 ports. This is about the time when I'd open up the server and show you the insides, and I will, but I wanted to make mention that this chassis isn't for the faint of heart. As you're about to see, getting to its insides isn't as easy as your traditional host. Let's take a look. Getting access to the CPU and RAM in this beast is not for the faint of heart. After removing the cover panel, the first thing you realize is that all of the power distribution for the server sits on top of the mainboard, CPUs, and most of the RAM. To gain access to those components, the first thing you have to do is pull the PSUs out of the back of the unit, pull some retention pins holding down a plastic shroud, 
then remove the plastic shroud itself. Remove a small metal airflow guide on the right, and then begin disconnecting the myriad of 8-pin power connections that distribute power not only to both the drive arrays, but also to the mainboard. After all those connections are removed, then you have to dig down to disconnect both the aux CPU power connection and the ATX power connection to the motherboard. Having small hands here would have been a benefit, unfortunately, I don't have small hands, so it took a bit to disconnect the cabling. Once everything is effectively disconnected, we can unscrew the rear retaining screws that hold the shelf into place, slide the shelf back, and slowly lift it out. Finally, we have access to the RAM and the CPUs. If you're wondering how long it took to fully expose the mainboard, it was a solid eight minutes, and I'd done this at least four times by this point. It is a much different experience than your typical server or workstation where pulling off the cover instantly provides you access to the internals. I'm not saying this by any means is a bad thing, it's just something you need to be aware of if you decide to go with the chassis like this. Now that we have a good view of the internals in the case, let's quickly go over some of the components and features of this server. This system is based on the Supermicro X11 DSC Plus mainboard that supports both Gen 1 and Gen 2 Intel scalable CPUs and is based on the Intel C621 chipset. The board features three Gen 3 PCIe slots, two 16X and one 8X PCIe, and the board includes all the standard enterprise features you'd expect, like a dedicated IPMI interface. One thing to note, this board has a proprietary form factor and purpose built for this chassis. Let's talk about the CPUs. This host is currently running dual Intel Xeon Gold 6130 CPUs. The Xeon Gold 6130 CPU features 16 cores and 32 threads per processor and has a base clock of 2.1 GHz with a single core boost to 3.7 GHz and all cores up to 2.6 GHz. The CPU has a modest max TDP of 125 watts, so I don't expect these sockets to run too hot, which is great. While the CPUs certainly aren't the fastest, most high-performance Gen 1 scalable processors out there, for storage duties, they're perfect. As previously mentioned, this system came with 192GB of DDR4-2666 ECC memory, and with the dual sockets, is capable up to 6TB of total RAM, which is just a mind-blowing amount of memory. For storage access, the system comes with a Supermicro AOM S3008M L8 SAS3 card configured in IT mode. Built on the Broadcom 3008 chipset, the interface is capable of 12 gigabit SAS and 6 gigabit SATA and has absolutely no RAID functionality. The card features 8 total connections using slimline SAS connectors, but via SAS expanders is capable of supporting up to 240 drives in IT mode. And if you're curious, the dual 2.5-inch SSD connections in the back of the system connect directly to the SATA controller built into the mainboard. Lastly, here's the shot of the Siam NIC just for reference. And as a note, without the Siam NIC, this system has no networking on the mainboard. Okay, let's talk about the deployment plan for this system. Like I said earlier, eventually the server will take over storage duties from SuperSAN. But since the hardware is new to me, I'm going to build it out and test on it a bit first before pushing it into production as my primary storage system. So for storage, we'll be outfitting the system with 24 768 terabyte SATA 3 SSDs that I liberated from a decommissioned Dell Unity a while back. That should net us around 169 terabytes of space, give or take. For the OS drives in the back, I'll be using two spare 480 gigabyte Intel data center SATA SSDs, which I'll run in a mere pair for redundancy. If you're planning on building out a host like this, be aware that the hardest caddies that come with the chassis do not support 2.5 inch drives. You can buy Supermicro 3.5 to 2.5 inch adapters online, which when you need 24 of them, turns out to be really expensive. Or if you have a 3D printer, you can solve this issue like I did here. I found these simple, easy to print brackets on printables.com. They allow me to screw the SAS SSDs to the bracket and then screw the bracket into the Supermicro 3.5 inch disc caddies that came with the system. I used high temperature PLA Plus for the filament and they worked great. I'll leave a link below in the description to the STL if you're looking for the same thing. Now let's get the system filled up with the discs and get it fired up.
All right, you have gotten this far. Let's talk about my final thoughts on this and what's ahead for the server. Let's start with the good. You guys know I have a soft spot for unique chassis and this one doesn't disappoint. Having 24 drives in a single to you chassis is super cool. Supermicro's design of this mid chassis 12 disc array is a really neat idea and they executed it really well. In fact, SMC is still making these same servers just now with the current Intel CPU still in them, which tells you that they've obviously been a success for them. I can't wait to start testing on this and eventually push it into production. Now let's talk about the not so great aspects of this. First, doing any real maintenance on this host isn't easy. You saw just how much effort goes into just getting to the RAM and the CPUs. If you're the kind of person who leans towards easy, then look elsewhere. There are plenty of other 4U chassis out there that will do 24 and 36 bays all day long. Next is the fact this system is a bit longer than your typical server. I mentioned it earlier in the video, but this chassis comes in at 34 inches long and it will be by far the deepest server in my cabinet. My 24U cab is considered a standard depth cab, but the server still fits without issue. So just keep that in mind if you're running something like a StarTech 24U rack or something with very limited depth. If you're not daunted by any of the above and like me, you love interesting server hardware, I've left a link in the description for this chassis and the corresponding drives used if you want to build out your own. Now let's talk about what's next for this host. Originally, my plan was to install TrueNest Scale on the host, physically move over my current CFS pools from SuperSan, and import my config. And it will probably end up being the case. But before I do that, I want to try rolling my own storage system from the ground up using Cockpit on Debian or Ubuntu. And just seeing how that experience feels compared to the turnkey nature of TrueNAS Scale. If you've got ideas on what I should do with this, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you have a cool name that you think this should be called because you know, last one's called Super Sand, Super Micro, it was a Sand, Super Sand, you get it. Get down in the comments and let me know what you think it should be called. I mean, be a little serious. I'm not going to call it Server Mix Server Face or whatever. But if you pick out a good name, we might end up calling it that. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buying some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here about the great home lab and self-hosting videos we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great home lab idea, we can help.